My wife cheated right in front of my face. I'm a 34-year-old male from a small rural southern town who just experienced the sudden end of a relationship. I'm hoping that writing down my experiences would help me get over it. To recap, okay, my cousin, let's call her C, is nine years younger than me and her closest friend since seventh grade. Let's call her T, is the lady who sparked the idea for this blog post. I went away to attend medical school while kids were in middle school, and I only go back to my hometown for three to four weeks per year. I met the grown-up version of T around five years ago and thought she was really stunning. She progressed into a tall, skinny division I college volleyball player. Since then, I've had a dream that when I return home for the holidays, I'll run into her and charm the living daylights out of her, very literally. Because I live in another state and wasn't going to attempt to get C to set us up, it was a pleasant little dream that I enjoyed, but I never actually considered pursuing it. It did, in fact, happen. I had a close cousin die away in the autumn, and T was able to make it to the memorial service. She told me later that day that she felt I looked nice at the funeral and that we had our first conversation later that day. She expressed an overt interest in me, and I was overjoyed by the circumstances. It made a significant difference in my mood after my family's bereavement. The next day, I went to Florida, and she immediately began contacting me on Instagram, which I responded to. We started flirting and quickly got into a discussion on sexual matters. When we were apart for a couple of weeks, we started having FaceTime dates every night. I ultimately returned home, and for over a week, we shared her flat in the same building as her. Everything went swimmingly, and I was overjoyed. Due of job obligations, I had to go back to Florida every other week, but I traveled back whenever I could. It was the day after Thanksgiving that I met her parents, and we informed them about our relationship. It had been a secret before this, at her request, since she didn't want C to be furious, which I thought was strange but didn't press the issue. I returned to my hometown in early December for a week to see her and offered a vacation to South Florida in the hopes of convincing her to fall in love with the area and contemplate relocating there. The suggestion was well received by C, and the two of them agreed to organize a vacation to Florida, where they would stay with me for a week during New Year's. I was really looking forward to this and had booked a 50-foot boat, arranged many dinner and brunch appointments planned a beach meetup with some friends who were also interested in meeting T, and so on and so forth. They had booked tickets for a one-week vacation, but I informed T that I wanted her to skip the journey back with C and instead stay with me for a while since she is able to work from home. Basically, I was getting a little fed up with the long-distance thing and told her that I wanted to try out being a live-in girlfriend for a short while to see how it went, and that it would help us determine where we should go from there. I just purchased a return ticket for her whenever she wanted to return. She was on board and seemed to be looking forward to it. They arrived in the United States on December 28, since I had returned to work a couple of days early after Christmas. That's when everything started to go wrong. Consequently, the first evening they are here, I take them out to dinner in Wynwood, where T casually notes that an old buddy, let's just call him old friend, from middle school in the Midwest whom she hasn't seen in 12 years, is down in Miami for New Year's Eve vacation with his family. He claims to have seen her Instagram story from my balcony and wants us all to go out for a drink together. I think it's a nice coincidence and I'm happy with whatever happens. I've never had any suspicions or seen any red flags previously, so I have no reason to be concerned. We meet in a pub near my house and everything seems to be going okay at first. The bartender has a distinct New York accent, and I had just returned from a residence in the city, so we start conversing about NYC-related topics. After around 15 minutes, the bartender is forced to return to his or her previous duties. As a result of my lack of concentration during my talk, I glance over to C, who is engaged in some kind of electronic activity on her phone. When I glance across at T, I'm taken aback. She's snooping around on her old pal. He's sitting comfortably, his hands resting on the bar, his drink in his hands. She's twisted around so that she's now facing him. Her legs were crossed, with the upper one resting on his leg. With continual eye contact and a giggling schoolgirl attitude at everything he says, he is as openly flirtatious as you could possibly conceive. 
After that, I saw that his hand was down in his inner thigh, just next to his I just stand there staring at what I'm witnessing, and then I double check to make sure both of his hands are still on the bar, which they are, and I see her rings on his hand, which they are not. As if I were on that roller coaster at Six Flags that sends you straight down, but in the H.E., I'm feeling nauseous. I turn around to confront C and inquire as to what the F in is going on and whether or not this is a hoax. I told her she needed to inform me if it was a joke right away since it wasn't humorous. She shrugs her shoulders and declares herself to be insane. That response didn't sit well with me, so I inquired as to what she was referring to. I adore her as if she were a sister, but she can be quite wild and crazy at times, she said. It was a vague and uncomfortably ambiguous response, and I thought to myself, once again, I look around and realize that I must have missed some incredible joke since T is in midst of a loud, exaggerated laugh. She leaned forward, with one hand resting on his shoulder and the other running down his inner thigh once again to finish the motion, started at his knee, and moved forward till it was almost touching his genitals. I panic out and tell C that this is not how I will be treated in the future, and I holler at the bartender for the bill. It was a rousing success, attracting the attention of the whole bar. An old acquaintance just sits up straight and looks straight ahead, without saying a word to anybody. T leaned around the back of him and said, What the effin' is wrong with you? He added that it was still early in the morning. I get to my feet and tell her that I'm not satisfied with what's going on in this room and that I'm ready to leave right now. C instantly jumps to her feet and goes to collect her handbag. You would expect her to travel with the person she is dating, as well as her closest friend, wouldn't you? T, on the other hand, throws me a nasty look, complete with an eye roll, and then immediately returns to her discussion as if I didn't exist. I couldn't believe what I was seeing and simply stood there stunned until the bartender handed me my bill. I rush out the door, with C trailing after me. Despite waiting ten minutes for T to appear, she does not appear. We take an humor back to the flat, and C wants to lie down since she's drunk and unhappy. So I pace the floors and drink a four-pack of golden monkey beer while she does. Until I hear back from her, I'll phone as many people as I can to complain and get the word out about what happened. I call C's mother, who happens to be T's mother's close friend, as well as around a half dozen other people. Finally, after 45 minutes, T contacts me and asks why I'm being such a jerk and have to disgrace her in front of everyone. I tell her about my problems as if she didn't already know about them, and believe it or not, she denies everything, because she didn't do anything illegal and didn't even touch him. She claims that my eyes must not be functioning properly. It was mind-blowing. I'd heard about gaslighting before, but I'd never been the victim of it to this extent. She continues to deny everything and refers to me as a lying a-hole on a regular basis. In my intoxicated and enraged condition, I was forced to continue this yes you did, I saw it, no you didn't, your lying debate over the phone and over text messages for an hour, which I regret. After I've had enough of arguing, I tell her that we need to settle down and that we'll chat when she returns home. Then she surprises me again more by announcing that she is going to stay at a hotel by herself since she does not want me to shout at her any longer. I tell her she can come back whenever she wants and I promise her I won't, since I'm frightened she'll go back with an old buddy. 